Namaste and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge weekly meeting. These meetings are the part of Essence of Knowledge program, which is an effort to provide the essential knowledge for the seekers of the path of knowledge. And uh, it is conducted online. It is completely free, and everybody is uh, most welcome to join the program. In these meetings, we try to answer the questions of the participants and conduct exams. i try to solve any problems that can arise during the practice so all questions are most welcome karish has a question if i am the one creating why can't i control anything or even peek into the mechanics that is memory how is the manifestation happening how can i evolve faster if all this is play so many questions here and all are good questions uh, the first uh, sentence is an assumption remember there is no creation and there is no creator moreover you are not the creator the word i can mean the human being this creature or it can mean the whole existence or the experiencer and obviously the human beings are created or you can say it is called a creature for some reason same reason it does not create anything and the whole existence also does not create anything it appears so remove this notion that there is an agency which is willingly doing something no as a individual there is uh, simply an idea that i am the doer there is no doer actually forget about creating there is no doer actions simply happen or they appear to happen then the doer is assumed then the word i is added into that assumption and at the level of the uh, experiencer which is universal there is no question of uh, doing anything all the experiences are simply appearing it is the nature of the existence in one sentence we usually say that existence is pure potential it is it has infinite possibility to appear as anything and so it is appearing the waves are appearing on the water in ocean the ocean is not creating waves it will be very poetic to say like this because the water has no agency to create anything they are appearing on its surface if you impose human qualities or doership on the existence which many people do then uh, this kind of confusion will arise now the matter of can we know the mechanics yes even though there is nobody who is doing anything or creating anything it is possible to know how everything is appearing the who question is answered but now how question h o w it is possible to know but only a little bit essentially we can know some things and that is covered in tantra bodhi however you can go to my channel and uh, watch all the videos on the path of knowledge series which are very much similar to the essence of knowledge program and i think from video number 20 to 30 there is a description of uh, illusion remember that all these descriptions will be simply theories they are models it is not really possible to know how everything is happening like uh, the question is saying how is the manifestation happening it is appearing there is no process and why there is no process that is shown in the chapter on basic analysis of experience and existence and experiencer processes happen in time existence is timeless in any if you view it for from any point of view it is timeless and so there is no question of any process happening all the processes appear as experiences of one or the other kind secondly there is no manifestation it is all empty nothing is getting created now the important question how can i evolve faster if all this is a play we say it is a play because we do not find any specific purpose any ready made purpose there so the answer to the question is why everything is happening is very simple that it is simply happening you can call it a play evolution is a part of the play evolution is a part of this dream that is appearing 
it does not matter whether it is true or false the evolution happens anyway even if you don't do anything the evolution will happen because if evolution is assumed that it is happening we can assume like this from our experience then you did nothing to evolve up to the human level there was nobody who did anything to evolve up to here still it happened that is the built in facility in the illusion you can say nobody was there to do, uh, to speed it up also still it happened since it is timeless everything has already happened can something be done in the illusion to speed it up yes after knowing all these facts and truths after clearing all your assumptions about what you are about what this illusion is remove all the doubts remove all the false beliefs and with this knowledge the evolution will automatically speed up why it slowed down that is the basic question here even though everything has happened already why i am already not at the peak and the reason is ignorance that is the probably biggest cause of devolution or stagnation it is ignorance so far mother nature has done her best to keep the evolution going but now in the human form you have a little bit of control over it and you can speed it up a little bit by removing the ignorance what the ignorance does is keeps you bound to one form to one set of mind to one kind of uh, uh, experience remember it is repetitive experience that is one thing we learn about the mechanics that it repeats in cycles once you uh, start learning about uh, the illusion this is the first thing we come to know that it repeats why does it repeat why are we stuck because of ignorance because you don't know what it is because you don't know what we are so the pattern continues that stops or slows down the evolution actually it will never stop and to devolve you will need to do something really bad to go back to go down in the ladder of the evolution which many people do and the reason is also ignorance for example bad actions bad mentality violence causing harm stupidity there are many long list so they go down actually in the ladder of the evolution they come down and they are recycled back into simpler forms so knowledge avoids this kind of harmful patterns in our lives knowledge will speed it up thousand times sometimes it is said that as a human it will be your last birth however we don't go into that part of the illusion on the path of knowledge because we know that uh, there are no births there is no death illusion is complete illusion there are no true parts in the illusion so everything is simply appearing including the evolution so we do not worry about it because you are already at the top you are already ultimate your identification with this creature will cause these kind of thoughts it is all good if you know that it is all false as soon as you assume that this evolution is true this human being is true i am this human being or i am something else which is evolving many people have many theories because this human creature will die it does not really evolve it dies it is destroyed so there is something else which must be evolving so the good news is that is the whole that is the existence it is appearing to evolve and it is almost certain that it will change into something else because impermanence is its nature so as long as you are established in knowledge there is nothing to worry it is already perfect as it is then the evolution becomes a play it becomes entertaining to speed it up slow it down reverse it forward it it comes under your control and the key is knowledge the key is not knowing how the manifestation is happening how to manipulate the illusion no that is not the proper way probably you will end up destroying the illusion because it is already set up perfectly all you can do is flow with it flow in the same direction where it is taking you that is possible only with knowledge not by uh, manipulating anything it is good to have knowledge of the illusion but uh, it is counterproductive to change it because it shows ignorance it shows little bit of selfishness 
so i can say a lot about it right now my suggestion will be to simply get established in knowledge remove all doubts progress everything is happening perfectly sometimes i say it is like a train if you want to go from one city to another what do you need to do just sit in the train go and sit in the train the train is already going to that city same way if you want to progress if you want to evolve just take the train of spirituality and the fastest train in this universe is path of knowledge you are already on the train nothing more needs to be done you need not push the train you need not run inside the train there is no need it is a royal path it is taking you there knowing this we enjoy the journey that is my session so anurakta is saying is there no place for meditation on the path of knowledge there is and meditation here simply means contemplation we also call it introspection there is a different kind of meditation on the path of knowledge it is not sitting in one place for hours eyes closed not thinking or breathing in specific way no it is not like this to meditate means to contemplate on the teachings see if they are true check your direct experience use your intellect use the logic sit down at one place if you want peacefully all the means that are required to know anything are present right now right here however we do not call it meditation actually the original meaning of the word meditation is thinking then it got corrupted because the yogic practices got translated into this word meditation especially the dhyan there is no uh, good word in english for dhyan so many teachers have translated it into concentration which is probably a better word better translation of the yogic practices it is called concentration but meditation always meant thinking in old english so because the word got corrupted we dropped it sometimes we say meditate on this matter i am meditating on my problem something like this is said but since the word has lost the meaning we never use this word we use contemplation or introspection introspection is a very beautiful word because it means seeing inside introspection what do you see inside yourself what do we do on the path of knowledge same thing so much so that we try to remain in this our knowledge 24 by 7 that is called the awareness practice if you don't like the word awareness you can call it meditation of some kind many people do that many people call it a meditation so as you know there are 1001 kinds of meditations in the world you can also generalize awareness into some kind of meditation and that is the practice on the path of knowledge that is taught in step number 4 step 2 is up simply about listening understanding the teachings step 3 is about verification sit down verify and uh, obviously exam and then there is step 4 where all the practices come in picture so dildar has a question when we encounter beauty or creativity generally a deep sense of contentment follows is there a way to invite creativity and beauty more consciously yes a very simple way is to recognize that uh, this existence is whole and perfect already the perfection is sometimes called beauty sundaram so recognizing this you will see that humans don't need to do anything to make it more perfect it is already perfect but we can do something to not cause problems here which means not to meddle in the perfection so the best way is not to do something which causes any faults in the working of uh, this existence what do i mean by faults any action that is harmful that is not productive that is not beautiful sometimes we call it bad action however there are many interpretations what is bad what is not so we come up with some kind of ethics ethical behavior that is also perfect and uh, we do not destroy the perfection that is already there in the existence and that which is perfect happens automatically you don't need to do it proactively it is already very nice as it is just don't do not destroy it. that is the minimum that can be done and if you want to do more then you will need to listen to the inspiration that is how it comes 
if you are living consciously which means in awareness there will be inspiration to do something if you remove all that is ugly imperfect and destructive from the life what remains is creativity and beauty how will i know that my actions are imperfect not beautiful not perfect very easy anything that is not with the flow of the existence will cause suffering will cause damage that is how we come to know if your lifestyle or your actions or your uh, even speech and thoughts are causing any kind of suffering that is when we are causing trouble in the perfection of the existence the suffering is the signal it is the existence beeping red light don't do this it is saying so as soon as we align ourselves with uh, what is already perfect the suffering disappears that is possible with awareness practice because you will catch the suffering if you are aware how to be aware know who you are know what is this human life know what is this illusion and that is possible on the path of knowledge by systematic study on the path of knowledge so what to do you are already doing it simply be, by walking on this path you will help to make your life better although that is not uh, the purpose of this uh, path the purpose is knowledge but this there is a side effect of knowledge that uh, you can avoid suffering by aware living by being in awareness of the truth and the side effects are seen automatically so according to me nothing more needs to be done anurikta is saying should we never create belief and reside in just knowing rather than believing can we live without any kind of belief system belief here means anything that is assumed without proper evidence if that is done the cause is just like i said suffering imperfection so can you live without any kind of belief system that will be optimum kind of life that there is absolutely no belief at all however it is possible to live with all kinds of beliefs all kinds of assumptions it is possible to live a good life assuming that all that is false is also true and it must be your own experience 99.99% of people live like this i am not saying their lives are bad sometimes they are very good so the whole life happens in falsehood the human life is totally false it is dream and we believe this dream we believe everything is true here my body is true my job is true all the people in my family are true people my actions are true i am the doer so this is how we usually live assuming things and that is called the transactional truth because there is no way to bring the truth into the falsehood it has no uh, real use there if you say everything is an, an, an illusion i am not this body mind uh, the creature will disappear completely it will not remain alive for long so the truth is uh, a problem in the life actually so we employ something called transactional truth there is no problem as long as you know that my assumptions are not true and uh, use utility as the criteria for truth instead of the ultimate truth and your life will be very nice so uh, the bad news is that in order to be alive we need to assume everything is true which is not we need to believe it and uh, the good news is that once you know the truth the life becomes better simply by knowing that uh, it is an illusion it becomes like a play it becomes very light although everything that happens in the life good and bad will happen it will not affect you that much so this is a complicated answer and the simple answer is do not create any belief which causes suffering for yourself and for others this is the simple answer if you believe that your food is true your pc is true your internet is true obviously it is not going to cause any kind of problems or suffering however there are some certain beliefs that will cause suffering for example i need um, a lot of money to be happy i need a lot of partners to be happy i need a palace to live instead of a house comfortable house or i need to destroy the whole world except my own country to be happy to be prosperous so there are people with these kind of beliefs and they are causing a lot of harm they are causing a lot of suffering 
so draw your line draw your line what causes trouble in the existence in the perfection that is what we call ethical system it is completely false yes but it is useful so create your own ethical system and uh, see what happens there are some guidelines given by masters and usually you follow them we don't create anything new because it is all perfect already so this is the uh, formula you can say everything is good if it is not causing suffering even the false is good remember illusion is also you illusion is also perfect so we do not throw the illusion away we use it probably we use it more effectively once we know what it is so i gave you the difficult answer also and the simple answer also think about it okay there is another question is the no self approach valuable when i contemplate the body as i am not my body or body has no abiding permanent self it appears as a consequence of causes and condition abiding is step number 4 right now you don't need to contemplate anything you don't need to do any kind of approach self no self focus on verification is the knowledge as per your experience is uh, the teaching true are there any logical problems in explanation are you preparing for the test exam so always go step by step when you start step number 4 a precise method is given there then you will need to leave all that which you heard from here and there or you read it somewhere that is not so useful at that time also but right now there is no need to do all these things you don't need to think of yourself as a body or not as a body nothing is needed right now focus on verification of the truth see the means of knowledge are sufficient or not check what criteria we used to find the truth do do i really know who you, i am test your knowledge check the quiz this is the step number 3 this is called a disciplined program exactly for this reason because if you go like this randomly no progress will happen it is all confusion a bundle of confusion noodle soup of practices and uh, knowledge that was heard from somewhere some sentences that were read somewhere it is all unsystematic and random so i don't know what people will learn in this program but probably they will learn some discipline how to go systematically on any spiritual path those who think i know what to do probably they don't need this kind of program those who want to go disciplined step by step manner as prescribed the program is for them and uh, this is not my uh, advice or this is not my system it is many thousand years old since many thousand years the great masters are using this system step by step approach listening contemplating abiding so you are at uh, the listening and verification step how old is this system we don't even know 10000 20000 more than that so we adopted it because it is time tested it works and going randomly willy nilly assuming things never works and it never worked for me also because i was also like this one day this practice next day some other practice next week a better practice because i read another book so there no progress happens madness happens and uh, this is the uh, i learned from my own experience and this is the motivation behind setting up this program that other seekers should not waste their time doing something like this remember there is nothing like this in the world at this time people are running their programs in the ashrams and so on i don't know what they do but uh, probably that is also not like this for 10 years this simply ask you to serve and it costs a lot if you you will need to leave uh, your job you will need to leave your family you will need to reside in the ashram and uh, once in a week the guru shows up with one sentence sanskrit somewhere after 10 years they teach you who you are so i was not happy with that kind of system this is fastest this is most systematic this is as per the scriptures it this is free you can sit at your home simply follow the instructions so discipline of the mind and intellect is the essence of the program only then the knowledge is gained okay one more question by anurakta i have heard from someone that believing in karma keeps you trapped here please clear, clear this confusion on karma is there really cause and effect 
and it is just that because we have believed it so we have fallen into it and what other pitfalls are there which we need to avoid the first thing is do not assume things as true because you heard it somewhere that is not the recommended means of knowledge the recommended means is your own experience and your own intelligence so someone said this someone said that it happens a lot people keep saying whatever they know but we do never believe it we believe what our experience tells us what our path tells us what is the meaning of walking on the path that we give up all these bad practices now you heard it from somewhere you read it somewhere and that was a big mistake give it up so what is the point of view of karma on uh, in the path of knowledge it is totally false it means action isn't it or cause and effect like you said so every action has an effect every effect has a action that causes it is this true and since it comes in the domain of experience it is that which appears it is completely false there is no doer or you can say there is no actor you are already pure and perfect you are not the doer so yes if you believe that i am doing something and i am getting the fruits of that i am getting the consequences of that that means ignorance is still there about who you are so it will keep you trapped in ignorance remember there is no here or there it is all a dream it will keep you trapped in the same dream just like we discussed right now it is a repetitive dream you will keep believing that i am the doer you will keep doing actions it does not matter whether it is a good action or bad action it it is a trap so what is prescribed on the path of knowledge is non doing how to do non doing simply be what you are are you doing anything no you are simply the observer a witness that's what you need to do simply be what you are so cause and effect is complete illusion there is probably a video on this but you can know from the knowledge that you had from the program itself that uh, cause and effect requires time there is a cause first in time after some time there is an effect and uh, since there is no time in the existence it uh, is not possible to have any cause or any effect will we comprehend this thing will we understand this thing no because the intellect operates in time and the cause and effect is an artifact of this kind of limitation of the intellect we assume that yes the, this thing happened after this thing the first experience must be the cause and the next coming experience will be the effect and because i did it i am responsible for it so on you know the doership is taken up the ownership is taken up so the mind is already trapped in these things we don't really need to do something some big mistake to get trapped it is already trapped and the the reason is ignorance again you have believed it and you have fallen into it exactly you are right so try to know what is true and cause and effect always means a change one change causes another change and all that changes is false it does not it does not matter who is the doer of that action because obviously there is no doer even if you assume the doer it is false so i never do anything i do not cause anything there are no effects i do not get the consequences these all appear here this is how the illusion or the dream is set up right now it will be like this it looks like it is very very systematic there are laws that appear in this illusion in this part of the illusion and that gives it a uh, appearance of truth that look whatever i do there are effects there are sometimes good effects there are bad effects so this is the truth we call them the laws of the mind or sometimes we call it call them the laws of the illusion probably everybody knows the physical laws law of the gravity and so on laws of motion these are all laws of the illusion and these laws make the illusion stable they that's what they are for it it is not that they make it true they give it an appearance of truth that look whatever i do the same thing happens that's called the law that nothing else will happen only this will happen sometimes the laws are so precise that you can write down the formula for it equation and one such law is the karmic law although it is completely false still in the at the level of the illusion it works this is how the illusion is set up you need to use it instead of believing that it is true 
there is a difference between using something and believing that it is true if you believe it is true you will remain trapped yes know what that it is illusion now you rise above the illusion you rise about the about the karmic law and now new ways are opened up simply because you know something about it you know i am not the doer that gives you a lot of freedom you know that i do not take the consequences of anything nothing affects me that causes a lot of peace suddenly you will find you are now not in the trap of these laws and anyhow you are the observer you are the witness of whatever is happening so you are already beyond the laws simply remember this that which is bound by the laws will remain bound by the laws we can improve it a little bit just like i said it is already perfect as it is just don't meddle in it and everything is already good and the cause of meddling or the cause of uh, um, suffering because of the laws whether it is karmic law or any other law you know there are many laws probably 10 or 12 laws are there so these uh, uh, laws are for our good ignorance about these laws causes suffering that is the pitfall ignorance is the pitfall do not try to destroy these laws or do not try to bypass the laws it is not possible but it is possible to use them a good example is science the scientific uh, world or the people scientists they do not break the laws of the physics they use it and that's where progress happens same way do we do not break the laws of the mind or laws of the illusion we use them once you know what they are you will be able to use them if you don't know what they are especially if you don't know on whom the laws are applicable then it can cause a little bit of problems it can it can be called pitfall so they are applicable to this creature human being body mind they are bound by the laws because without laws there is nothing it will disappear in one second remember the laws are there to stabilize the illusion you can say like this although it is completely purposeless but right now it is appearing like this this possibility is manifested right like this so we don't need to destroy them simply need to use them and fully knowing that it is an illusion we can uh, utilize them how to do that knowledge is the first step everything happens after that everything happens automatically after that and the basic knowledge is i am beyond the laws check if that is true or not isn't it check if that itself is a belief or assumption so again importance of going step by step you cannot command the laws you cannot utilize the laws if you don't know the truth the way to know the truth is to walk on a path under the guidance of a teacher systematically once you are in the train the train will take you to your destination nothing needs to be done okay anurakta saying is it true that what fault we see in others are inside us no probably they are not inside the other also what we see is a projection of what is inside the other person we try to guess how the other person is by their behavior and their behavior is not that big indication that uh, there is a fault in the person you will need to observe that person for a long long time to know that person and because it is a person it is a changing thing they keep changing so the old faults disappear the new faults come in or there is some improvement also sometimes so judgment is always um approximate i'm not saying it is incorrect no but uh, what we find in others is approximate d- depending on our own judgment our own evaluation and uh, the situations there and the behavior of the person under those conditions that means there are too many variables to see how the other is so if we see that uh, there is a fault in the other it is not good to assume that it is a permanent feature of that person and it is absolutely wrong to say that it is in me it is not like this this is a common belief that a thief sees everybody else as a thief a corrupt person sees everybody else as corrupt this belief pr- probably comes from this kind of behavior that we see in people but uh, any intelligent person knows that and things are more complicated than this simple assumption that uh, i'll see everybody else just like i am sometimes it, it happens but that happens in a really ignorant cases like i said 
thieves and corrupt people what about a seeker will the seeker say everybody is seeker what about the gani knowledgeable person will he say everybody is knowledgeable everybody has this knowledge never <laughs> so we do not project the goodness on others we do not project the faults on others it is simply uh, illogical to do that what is inside us do not check other people check yourself that is called self evaluation how to do, do that how to see what faults or impurities are inside us technically it is called impurity that is step number 5 of the program self evaluation there are many videos about it how to check what is wrong in me you know do never bother about what is wrong in the other we are not here to fix other people we are here to progress Uh, that is what why you are a seeker isn't it otherwise you would become a politician or a social worker or policeman so leave others as they are they are perfect as they are wherever they are focus on what is inside you that is possible through introspection by checking what is the constitution of this body mind how is this body mind is it good is it bad and uh, there is a technique for that that is called self evaluation we have divided the body mind into 10 categories and probably i should not go into that detail right now you will learn about it in in uh, step number 5 why should we do that simply to avoid suffering just like we are saying if there are impurities in us their indicator will be suffering how to know that uh, there are impurities knowledge knowledge is the key how will i know that uh, this is the impurity that is manifesting awareness without awareness you won't be able to see anything that is why purification is after the awareness practice once you ignite a little bit of awareness you will see even the smallest kind of suffering that happens and then you can pick even the tiniest bit of impurity in this body mind remember you are pure you are beyond suffering and uh, happiness you are the bliss this is important to know and then it is your play to remove any faults in this body mind always remember that uh, you are not this body mind and uh, forget about the others nothing can be done about them they are responsible for their own purity and impurity so spirituality is completely about self you can say it is self oriented we cannot say it is selfish because by creating this kind of potential we are actually improving the whole world remember if everybody becomes spiritual the whole will become spiritual so one person at a time progress is happening there is a beautiful metaphor by some teacher that every flower does its best to bloom and spread the fragrance this flower is not trying to fix the other flower you can have another metaphor of fruits every fruit is doing its best to become ripe and delicious one fruit on one branch is not trying to make the other fruit sweet this is how this nature is it is already perfect how however it is operating and you are that flower are you doing your best to bloom in the best possible way are you expressing your potential in the best possible way your job is done now forget about other we are not going to do anything about them it is a kind of arrogance to do that that i'll fix everybody what about you so my opinion is to see what faults are inside you without worrying about what is happening to others what is happening in the world these things are not in our control the best thing that is in our control is this body mind right now this life that we have taken and the best use of this life human life is to progress progress happens by walking on a good path path of knowledge is a absolutely beautiful path if you go here systematically everything will happen perfectly this is spirituality in short so i think today's questions are over and uh, we'll meet again next time if you have any more questions you can ask me next time thank you everybody for attending the meeting